The first time I played Tetris was on an old clear Game Boy Pocket. It didn't really impact me that much. Sure, it was fun, but I sort of just found it to be a redundant game with no storyline, and after a while it began to bore me. Besides, my brother was always really good at games like this, another one was Luminous, as he was more into puzzles and math. I just kind of let it be his thing. It wasn't until we got a Nintendo 64 that everything changed. I was a bit older by this point in my life and thus could ingest more mentally than ever possible in my Game Boy days. My brother received the new Tetris one day and quickly established his dominance as a literal god of this game. Like he unlocked god mode without even putting in a cheat code. At the forefront, I noticed that I loved the music in this game. The entirely jungle soundtrack that Neil Voss made was the byproduct of an incredible era in VGM and, in my personal opinion, is one of the most underrated soundtracks of all time. I was incredibly drawn in by this fact alone, but watching my brother play rounds, sometimes for hours, was incredibly mesmerizing. I found that I loved watching him break record after record. Just personal bests at this time. He never competed in this game, though I think he really should have. You see, the new Tetris had some incredible gameplay mechanics that made it stand out from the rest of the series, and it's why this particular title is my favorite Tetris game to this day. The first thing to note is that apart from being able to see the next few pieces that are coming in the pipeline, you have a piece on deck that you can swap in and out of a slot on the left side of the screen by pressing L. You can save this particular piece for a time when you choose to play it. At times, it can save you from some super shitty moments, and at other times, it can be used to summon the long piece to easily give you a Tetris. You are also able to turn a piece at the last second to fit in seemingly impossible places, which can come in handy as well if the RNG gods give you a piece you think you cannot play. You actually just might be able to survive yet. The most important game mechanic, however, is the creation of perfect 4x4 squares. When you make one of these with differing pieces, you will create a silver square. When you create one with four of the same piece, it creates a gold square. Nailing a Tetris with a silver square will net you 25 lines, and a gold square will net you 45 lines. In the games that I play, I like to stack yellow, green, and orange pieces on one side of the play area, and I try to make squares with the rest of the pieces on the other side of the play area, hoping that I can get two long pieces to make ginormous Tetrises and watch my score go up really quickly. My brother used the same strategy back in the day. My friend Avery recently fixed my Retroid Pocket 3 Plus after I had dropped it when I lived in California, breaking the L and R buttons. Thus, I had the sudden urge to play some classic games again. One of the games I had downloaded was the new Tetris. The soundtrack had recently been on my mind because I tweeted at Neil Voss about remixing some of it one day and he responded that if I do, I should send the songs to him. Don't worry, Neil, I will. Thus, I decided to play some rounds and quickly realized how much fun this game was. I play a mode that is called Ultra Mode, where I try to get 150 lines as fast as I can to win, and the addition of making squares as a game mechanic makes this really fun. I love to see how quickly and uniquely I can make squares to boost my score as fast as possible. Now, in playing so many games of Ultra, I made a very grave realization. Life isn't just like one game of Tetris, it's like several games of Tetris. I want to be clear about that distinction. Due to its randomness, no game is the same in Tetris, and lots of these games take different kinds of skills to beat. There are a lot of life lessons that we can glean from playing several games of Tetris over an extended period of time and analyzing our results. There are too many variables and combinations of play that can happen over the course of several rounds, just as in real life. Also, if I were to argue that it was just like one game of Tetris, that would be akin to life and death, and I can absolutely assure you that Tetris is not life and death. Sure, you only get one shot in life, but for most things in life, you get way more than one shot, and that's why we need to analyze this game in this manner. Luckily, I have already done it for you, so that you don't have to. Haha! -ha. Here are the top five things that playing the new Tetris has taught me about living my life. When a game of Tetris starts, it brings me a sense of calm and possibility. I'm someone who loves a challenge, but I love a challenge that is feasibly overcome. When you are at the start of a game of Tetris, it's almost like a breath of fresh air. The whole world is ahead of you, the pieces are moving slowly, and you are the master 
of what happens next. Have you ever approached a new phase or season of life and felt the same thing? I know I have several times. Typically, when these times in my life hit me, when I know it's a new season, the song New Bodom from Final Fantasy 13 2 encompasses my feelings. Sometimes changes like these are up to you and at other times they are brought to you by the universe. Embrace both scenarios. Sure, one might feel more empowering than the other, but knowing that you are at the beginning of a new season, no matter the circumstance, can be one of the most powerful motivators of progression and growth you will ever experience. Know that this is where you belong, and make the most of it, despite how random it may seem. The RNG gods will always do their bidding, but it's how we act with this randomness hitting us that is important. To a point, the game's RNG is what makes the new Tetris interesting, similar to how life events and different variables also make life interesting. Granted, Tetris is a close-ended system, not an open-ended system, as we talked about while quoting Dr. K in the video game addiction video. Not knowing what is going to happen is a wonderful thing if we view it from the right lens. Sure something really bad could happen, but if we live in constant fear, our lives will be miserable. Instead, we should view things from the lens of, wow, something amazing could happen today. And if it does, I'm here for it. Even if it's not over 9,000, I'm still going to appreciate beauty in the small things. Mindfulness in the present is critical here too. Too often, we see new seasons of life in such a way that we are constantly thinking in one of two ways. If we feel as though we had better circumstances in life before, we dwell on the past. On the flip side, if we feel like our new season is going to be better than the last, we look towards the future. While it is good to appreciate where we came from and have an open mind to where we are going, focusing too much on the past or the future keeps us from appreciating what we have right now. In one of his YouTube shorts, Dr. K explains how he was at the beach on a vacation and all he saw was people taking pictures. Why don't you just enjoy your time there instead of taking a thousand pictures? <laughs> if you were at a concert, why are you taking so much video? Be there in the moment and enjoy the music. Besides, you'll typically not even look at any of those photos or videos. <laughs> so who cares? Now, I would be a hypocrite if I said I didn't love to take photos of places I've been, but I'm not doing it constantly. There is a balance to be had here. My wife and I just took a day trip to Chicago, and we saw a group of girls taking pictures by the river for, <laughs> I kid you not, about 20 minutes. We were shocked that they were still there after five minutes, let alone the other 15. Now, that gave us a fine moment to laugh about, but what about those girls? They weren't even enjoying the surroundings of the city. They we're just taking pictures to post on social media and make others jealous. I mean, okay, I'm not entirely certain it was that kind of energy, but also I'm pretty certain it was that kind of energy. When I'm out and about, I'm taking pictures maybe 5% of the time while taking in my surroundings and enjoying the moment 95% of the time. I personally think it's a bit healthier. I was recently on a hike in Colorado in Rocky Mountain National Park. Those of you who know me are aware that I'm more a fan of the great indoors than anything else. I'm not necessarily obsessed with athletics. DJing is my workout, nor am I good at being in super high elevation. It absolutely takes my breath away and I've learned that it can also give me bad nosebleeds. That said, I had more than enough energy to crush this hike, which was mostly uphill towards Dream Lake. And crush it I did. While hiking though, instead of thinking about how I'd rather be sitting down, I thought about how I was with my wife surrounded by others that I love and how that was important. I pushed out the thoughts of the hike being over and I pushed out thoughts of how I wish the hike had never started. <laughs> I remained in the moment and you know what? I began to actually enjoy the hike. When we finally got to the lake, it was a gorgeous moment. And honestly, I didn't even take one picture. Sure, I was in some pictures, but I mostly just sat there, enjoyed the breeze and took in the amazing view. None of us are promised tomorrow. So it's not fair to ourselves to only think about what we are going to do or what we've already done. We have to focus on being in the present moment to even get close to achieving any kind of happiness in life. Now is all we are guaranteed, so we should try our best to not overlook the only thing we truly have. It's similar in Tetris. Enjoying playing the game is important, as I'll touch on later. It's in the moment we are actually playing the game that we are having fun, not before or after. Well, in game, sure, you've got to plan a few moves ahead to know what your strategy is, but that is still an in-the-moment task. Hopefully, you aren't thinking about what you are having for dinner in two weeks while you are playing. <laughs> Hopefully, you aren't thinking about how much better your life was when you used to live in the last place you lived while you are playing. Hopefully, you are just present in the moment 
and focused on the game itself. This, my friends, is the distinction I want to make, and it's a reason I love the new Tetris. It helps me live in the moment and obliterate all other distractions. Now, like I said earlier, I have a pretty strict strategy for playing the new Tetris. I like to stack yellow, green, and orange pieces on one side, and I like to make squares on the other side with the other pieces. That said, the game's RNG doesn't always allow me to do this. I have to force myself to adapt, just as in real life, and sometimes that results in me making squares on the other side of the map putting pieces where I don't want to put them, or, in general, just trying to make normal lines instead of squares and mega tetrises. Does the RNG stop me from playing the game, though? Of course not. I always try to adapt as best as I can and to keep going as I see fit. Sometimes my strategy is messed up for the entire game. Like in, in this game, I started off super strong with three squares on the left side right away, but then the RNG got to me and I had to literally grind line by line until I made it through the game. This is going to happen to you at times in life. Things won't always go perfectly all of the time. Variables will be introduced all the time that shake things up. If you stay steadfast, you will absolutely be able to overcome and rise above. Not to mention, in some games I've played where things haven't gone according to my plan, I'm able to stack pieces in a way that is incredibly satisfying, despite not achieving huge line scores. Finding beauty in the mundane things in life will result in being content every time you choose to. Life makes you adapt. Sometimes you start off with an explosion of good and then not much happens to you after that. Sometimes things even turn negative. This has the tendency to discourage some people as they walk through life. In turn, these mindsets can be extremely hard to overcome. Now, there is something to be said here about expectation setting and I respect this when it's done healthily. Expecting the most amazing things to happen to you all the time isn't necessarily a realistic way to walk through life. Bad things will inevitably happen. However, to expect bad things to happen to you all the time, that's just the other end of the extreme remedy spectrum and it's not a good thing either. Sometimes nothing happens and we have to grind through the mundaneness of life, yet we can still find beauty in the way we make the pieces fit with each other. It's all about what we make of it. Life is 10% what happens to us and 90% how we react to it. I always hated this phrase when I was a kid as I am a very passionate person. When I was younger, it was harder for me to hide my emotions to please others and quite frankly, it still is. That said, this phrase is true. We have to take what we are dealt, respond accordingly, and move forward positively to kick ass in life. For some people, this is way easier said than done, especially considering some people in life metaphorically start their game with a bunch of pieces already scattered on the playing field, requiring faster reaction time and a lot more struggle. Yet it's still possible to win. Sometimes life just simply doesn't reward us. Yet we do things either because we love them or because it's what's necessary for survival. In such cases, more resilience is required, but again, it is still possible to succeed. As a Gemini, I am a master at adapting to whatever scenario I'm in. Some would say that this makes me fake, or that they never know what to expect from me, but trust me, when I'm around people that allow me to be myself, I am myself. If you know me from the video game music scene, you can trust that you have seen me at my 100% self. In my experience though, sometimes who I am is too much for people, and it's something that I can sense on a deep level. What do I mean by this? Well, I have a lot of energy, and I generally just want to have a good time, but this energy doesn't always match other people's. It's about reading the room. My times as a DJ, restaurant server, and Uber driver have taught me a lot about having social awareness and sensing other people's energy. For example, if I am in a group setting and I can sense that my energy is too much for someone in the room, I either focus my attention on other people or I meet people where they are at as to not overwhelm them. It's just the right thing to do in my opinion. Now, I will argue strongly that this isn't me becoming a different person, but it is adapting to a situation in order to maintain harmony. Am I always perfect at it? No. I have absolutely misjudged what is going on and completely fallen on my face before. That said, I have learned from my mistakes and positively progressed, apologizing if necessary, and communicating that a behavioral change is imminent. That, my friends, is being as real as it gets. Now, if you are finding yourself in situations that you are constantly having to adapt to the room, you need to find arenas where you can be yourself. In this gray world we live in, both are necessary. Having the skills to read the room is just as important as finding a room you don't have to read. Find community that lets you be you, and I promise you will obtain 
a significant XP boost in your mental health. Over several games of the new Tetris, I have found that some rooms enable my strategy to flourish, and I beat the game super quickly. Other times, my strategy gets rocked. I have to adapt to the current room that I'm in and overcome the challenges set before me. In most cases, I still win my round. Both scenarios are positive and both feel good in different ways. Mastering this balance is absolutely achievable, and I know that you can find it if you try. As I touched on earlier, sometimes you are forced to make a move right away in a game of Tetris that is seemingly against your strategy. However, if you stay resilient, adapt, and move forward, you still have a chance of succeeding. It's really easy to see that something didn't immediately go the way we want and be tempted to give up right away, but you can still come back and win. Now, although I'm not really into sports, to me, it's just a bunch of millionaires throwing a ball around for a living. I do find some sports highlights to be incredible. That said, I'm a gamer, so I'd rather focus on esports. At CDL 2021, Toronto Ultra was up four games to zero against Minnesota Rocker in the championship final. Before the fifth match, Reppin said, I don't give a fuck if they won four straight. We can do it too. That's exactly what they did. Plus one. Minnesota came back to win five matches in a row and secure the title. How easy would it have been for them to just give up? Super easy. However, they stayed resilient and ended up taking the title. What if they had kept their heads too much in the past, letting their discouraged nature get to them? What if they focused too much on the future, just wanting to get the game over with and move on in life, admitting defeat? They didn't do either of these things. They realized they were a better team and played in the present moment. What an amazing analogy for a perseverant life. <laughs> also, Minnesota represent. Keeping a calm, cool, collected head is important in scenarios like this. Have you ever messed up on something in life and then gotten flustered that you messed up, so you just continue to mess up and perform poorly? Yeah, so have I. I've also done it in some games of Tetris, where I accidentally misdropped a piece, and then I got flustered. <laughs> move after move ended up becoming misdrops, and I lost the game entirely. However, in other games, I maintained a calm and collected head, and my potential to win was sustained despite not doing things perfectly. That's another huge point to stress. Games of Tetris are not meant to be perfect, and neither is life. It's amazing when things go the way you want them to, but almost nothing in life will ever be perfect perfect, so get rid of that expectation. Do this especially if you are creative. Please abandon the urge to perfect what you are doing. Nothing will be perfect, so don't let the lack of perfection stop you from putting your art out into the world. This isn't an excuse to perform poorly either, and I know you didn't take it that way, gamer, because you're smart. Just make sure that you are always improving and maintaining awareness of what is happening around you. On that note, when I was watching a lot of these gameplay videos back, I often found myself questioning why I made a move that I did. <laughs> Hindsight is 2020. We can always look back in life and question why we did certain things. Wishing we did it differently is what we should avoid here. You cannot change what you have done in the past. You can only learn from it and move forward. As discussed in my video about Yusuke, I shared a story that I once made a bunch of money in the stock market, but then I lost it all, reverting to break-even status because I got too cocky. I beat myself up for this like you wouldn't believe in the coming months, as that kind of money would have brought me a freedom I hadn't experienced ever before in my life. However, I thought that I needed more. This couldn't have been further from the truth, but I was blinded by greed. Now that I have had time to contemplate things, I could have possibly turned into someone or something disgusting if I hadn't been humbled like that. Money and power have a drastic tendency to corrupt. And honestly, I can say that I'm glad it happened to me. It caused me to shift my strategy, and now I'm living the lifestyle I thought was impossible to live with far less money than I thought I needed back then. In addition, I'm living with perspective now. I have shifted gears and have learned from my mistakes in life to move forward in a positive manner. Sulking about the past is no longer something I choose to do. That said, part of Tetris is also knowing when not to be too cocky. One time, I had a great game going, and I got a bit close to the sun, so to speak. It was wise of me to not keep stacking pieces and just take a temporary L and put this gold piece here. That said, the game eventually rewarded me for it, and I absolutely smashed the round. That is why I'm a firm believer in the fact that if you are acting two to three moves ahead and you are living in an awareness that you are crushing it, go ahead and crush it and do it without remorse. Of course, maintain a balance and don't be a dick about it either, but revel in your success and be proud of yourself. You earned it after all. As the section title 
states. Sometimes life will give you unconventional methodologies to win, just as we see with the movement of this piece here. I don't normally make squares like that, but I did here. Don't stick to just one strategy because it has worked in the past. I have to do this constantly as a creator, and it's just a good way to go about life in general. It always blows my mind when people are generally against change. And when I say generally, I mean most of the time they just want things to stay the way they are. Why live like this, though? I mean, yeah, if regression is the outcome, I don't want that to change either, but if changes are moving us forward as people and as a society, I don't see any reason why they shouldn't occur. Becoming better should be the aim in life, not remaining stagnant just because this is the way it's always been done. That's a terrible excuse. Embracing change is embracing potential excitement and potential improvement. View it from a positive lens, and it will do you a lot of good in life. I know, I know, I am typically preaching a message of you can do it and never give up. I especially harped on this in the last section. However, if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always gotten, or whatever it is that they say. My point is that there are times when things should end, and it's up to us to know the difference and unearth these nuances in life. Okay, Mr. Don't Give Up, what times are those, you might ask? Well, all I can do is give you examples from my life and hope that you can somehow apply them to yours. A few weeks ago, I went out with some friends and we went absolutely ham. <laughs> we met up for dinner, went to multiple clubs downtown, drank all through the night, and maybe got slightly green by the end of the night, if you know what I mean. Yay, edibles in Minnesota. After our debauchery downtown, we ended up at an after party where we kept DJing until the sun came up. It was super fun, but I then noticed that it was almost 9 a.m. and none of us had gotten any sleep. When the Uber finally arrived and I got home, I was unable to pass out because the sun was already up. Combine this with missing my wife, who was traveling for work at the time, and oh boy, I absolutely lost it. I wept for about two hours straight. It got so bad that I even had to call my bestie, G Soon from the Limit Breakers, and have her talk me down. What did I learn from this experience? Well, first of all, I cannot, under any circumstances, ever do that again. Staying up till 9 a.m. is just bad for my mental health and makes me feel like an absolute loser. Disclaimer, some people can do this and they are just fine. I'm not talking about them, I'm talking about me. It's especially helpful to know your own limits, but I'm also glad I did this so that I could better define, in my adult years, how much I am capable of handling. Now, I know to never do this much again. We should have just quit and ended what would have been a great night much earlier, and I feel like we would have all been fine. I had a gig the next day with someone who was at the after party who told me they didn't sleep and we were both like, never again. <laughs> so my friends, too much of a good thing can be a bad thing. Even water, the source of life, if ingested too much, can be detrimental. We must seek balance. So yes, we should quit at certain points in life as not to abuse or become desensitized to good things. However, we should also quit in other circumstances. Quitting doesn't necessarily mean ending everything cold turkey, though. It could be just adapting and shifting strategy like we harped on before. A powerful metaphor that I touched on in previous videos was me trying to become a mainstream trance DJ for several years. I saw rejection after rejection and experienced more roadblocks than I can say. Despite my nominal success, quitting that never-ending uphill hike and shifting my strategy to VGM was when I noticed I could be successful. I was still playing the same game, DJing, as one keeps playing the same game of Tetris, but I just shifted my strategy and then I began to win. In Tetris, there is a certain point where you actually should quit and try again. Sometimes you do screw up and start misdropping pieces, causing chaos in the playing field. There is a moment in which the game becomes irredeemable and isn't even fun anymore. Yes, resilience is key in life, but you can always try again. This is why I stress that life is like several games of Tetris, not just one. Sometimes we should start over, take a deep breath, don't let our previous failures distract us, and move forward having learned from our mistakes. It becomes much easier to still win if we have the right mindset.
The concepts I'm about to share will be very similar to what I said earlier about being present, but they have their own nuances, I promise. I have heard some people in life say that life is going well for them, and because of that, they are just waiting for something bad to happen to them. Why though? Why expect bad things to happen? That's not healthy at all. How about you readjust your expectations to not expect anything? Then, if something bad happens, you don't have this negative cycle of reinforcement plaguing your psyche. If nothing happens, okay, same old, same old. If something good happens again though, amazing. In lieu of things happening, sometimes games of Tetris go perfectly. The way you are able to complete the challenge just goes so smoothly that you feel like a god at the game. Ride that high. It's amazing. And when you play your next game and it doesn't go so well, just know that it's not because you are bad at the game or bad at life. Things happen that are out of our control sometimes, and even if you mess up embarrassingly on something, know that with experience, good or bad, comes wisdom. In games like this, I feel as though trying to look two to three moves ahead is what makes them successful, sort of like I touched on earlier. It's the same when I'm DJing. If I'm playing a set at, say, The Saloon, one of the most famous clubs in Minnesota, I tend to have four tracks ready that I could play at any given moment. Knowing that far in advance what I'm going to do enables me to pull off quick transitions, and if something isn't going well with the crowd, I can mix out right away. My most successful freeform sets are the ones where I am two to three moves ahead. To stress a previous point again, life is about the journey though, not the destination. Before you start a game of Tetris, you aren't having fun yet. When you finish a game of Tetris, you aren't having fun anymore. When you are in the midst of playing though, you are having fun. Our society is so driven by cancerous, capitalist, infinite growth that we often live checklist lives, always just going on to the next thing. We rarely take moments for ourselves to just be be in the present. We have become so classically conditioned to making others profit at all times, and for most of us, it's because we have to do this in order to survive in this dystopian hellhole. For some of us though, we are not content with what we have at all. I know for me, if I'm not constantly getting ahead in my life, it makes me feel bad, but this is unhealthy, and even I know that. Taking a step back to enjoy what we have accomplished and to appreciate the journey we are on is so important. Again, pre-journey isn't fun because it hasn't started yet, post-journey isn't fun either because it's over, appreciate and cherish your journey. Fight capitalist 1% bullshit by not being productive sometimes, aka just moving right on to the next thing in life. This is advice I'm living by more and more as each day passes. Earlier, I mentioned the night of debauchery I had with my friends and how I wept because I was missing my wife. This night and subsequent day changed my mindset, and I'm now adapting to a new life strategy. I only have so much time that I get to spend with Maddie, mostly because life is short, but also because we both travel a lot for work and we're separated for good chunks of the year. When I am with her, I make it a priority to spend all the time I can with her because that is what is important at the end of the day. At the end of my life, I'm not going to remember how much money I had. I'm going to remember the experiences I had and the people I had them with. That is a life that I want and that is a journey I want to exist within. One thing I love about the new Tetris is the concept of building different monuments in parts of the game based on how many lines you clear. The game has different geographical and cultural themes and the monuments you build out of lines lines correlate accordingly. There is a portion of the menu where you can just sit there, listen to music, and enjoy the progress you've made by watching these incredible cutscenes that show the monuments you've built within the surrounding landscape. When I was a kid, I never really appreciated this feature. I just wanted to play the game, aka moving on to the next thing. Yet I never took the time to be grateful for what I had built. I never took the time to just sit there and do nothing, listening to the music, and enjoying what I had accomplished. There's nothing wrong at all with with just chilling and doing nothing. Fight our modern hustle culture. It's so easy to just keep grinding after we've achieved something big. We often don't stop to enjoy the success we've achieved. This is even hard for me sometimes, but we must stop and slow down to have a balanced life. Practice your right to quiet enjoyment, be mindful of the present moment, and celebrate your successes through mindful reflection. We only get one life. Don't let yours pass you by. Hey, thanks for watching. In my next video, I'll be defending what I've been preaching for years, that video game music is specifically outstanding for your mental health. To do that, I will be analyzing an unlikely source that I was introduced to in the most simulation-esque of ways. Until next time, take care of each other. Bye for now.